Hello and welcome back to my Factorio 1.0 tutorial Let's Play series on Exterminator and thank you for joining me again here guys and uh, we are back where we were last time we have this purple science uh, arrangement here ready to accept materials and what we're going to work on today is all those materials so uh, if we take a look here at the production science uh, it needs rail, electric furnaces and productivity modules uh, the productivity modules and the electric furnaces are pretty simple. Uh, I think we'll start with the furnaces, actually. Uh, so taking a look at the furnace recipe, uh, it needs steel, which we do already have made on the bus right here. It needs advanced circuits, which we also already have. We do need to put them on the bus, though. Uh, and then we also need stone bricks. We're going to have to do a smelting setup uh, very similar to what we've done right here for the wall. And uh, I did fail to build the other side of this unfortunately I uh, streamed earlier today and got a late start so unfortunately I didn't have time but we can just build that out very quickly here it's very straightforward uh, and there is actually one thing I want to show you uh, up with uh, by the mining with our coal uh, that someone mentioned last time and asked why I didn't do it a specific way and uh, I actually just didn't really consider it at the time because I was in you know a bit of a rush to get power back up and running and all that, uh, but I want to show you uh, an alternative and probably better way uh, that we can do things uh, th than how we did do them. So, just show you that. This is nearly set up here already. This guy is not quite in the correct position there, unfortunately. I guess if we match it to this. Um, how was this one? Ah, these are slightly off, unfortunately. Spending maybe a little more time than I should here, but it's okay. Uh, and then this one is like that. Okay, uh, so copper can come on over here. Let's just pick this with the picker tool and get that going, and that should be ready to go. Uh, okay, so let's really quickly run over to the mining, and I just want to show you quickly an alternative of what we can do. And uh, while we run over there, I'm going to pick up some materials here, just holding F to do that and uh, maybe craft some more assembling machines. We do have uh, the materials to make furnaces, so we need to make those again because we need to smelt the brick for those electric furnaces. And uh, inserters we can pick up, of course, at our hub section. Um, so what I've done is I've created two separate lines, one going to smelting and one going to power. Uh, however, kind of a cleaner, I would say, method and also easier to expand method uh, is to use the filter splitter ability, the, the ability splitters have to filter things. Uh, so what we can do is actually just combine all of this into one line. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take this here and I'm going to route this up this way. We're going to use a splitter just to combine these. Uh, and then we're actually, so it's going to be a bit interesting, uh, I guess I could say how we do this. Uh, we're going to combine these uh, just like that. And then I would do it here, but actually it's more convenient to do it farther down the line. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll put another one here. This is, uh, I can probably do it in a, just a generally cleaner way uh, placement wise, uh, but we'll do it here for now. So these are, this is all one line now. Uh, and what we can do is we can go into here and we can filter uh, and priority. Priority is actually what we want. I believe I said filter a minute ago. Apologize for that. Uh, if we choose output priority, and we want to choose down here so you can switch it, you can see this little yellow arrow moving. We want to do right. Um, so what this is going to do is this is going to prioritize sending coal uh, to the bottom. Uh, so basically, it'll send any coal that there is on the line to the bottom until the bottom uh, doesn't need it, and then it will send it the other way. Uh, you know, if, if maybe the bottom only needs half of a line, it will send half worth and then send the other this way. Uh, but w what this is doing is this is basically just saying uh, prioritize power, send any coal the power needs uh, before you send it anywhere else. Uh, and that's just a really nice way we can do that. Uh, we don't even need a filter there. My inventory is actually full. Which is a bit of a fun issue to run into. So we're just going to take these uh, stacks of coal here, hold control and just place them in there. We certainly don't need that much coal. We should go put this copper in the copper smelters as well. And uh, much like on belts, you can just hold F to pick up things on the ground. And there we go. So I did want to show you this because uh, someone mentioned it and I realized that uh, that is actually in fact a much better way to do it. 
now that I have time. And we're going to drop these off, and then we're going to work on our materials for the purple science. So electric furnaces, uh, we're going to do steel and circuits, I suppose, on a belt. It's a fair bit, but I think we can handle that. It is a five-second craft. Uh, and looking at this, we need one electric furnace <clears throat> every 21 seconds. However, uh, we do need to keep in mind uh, that we have seven of these machines because we want a base craft rate of one a second. We did go over that ratio last time. Uh, so we essentially need seven times that amount. So seven electric furnaces every 21 seconds, which is three, uh, sorry, one every three seconds, essentially. Um, Right, if we, if we need seven every 21 seconds, we need one every three seconds, because seven goes into 21 three times. Uh, and if we look at the furnace here, this takes five seconds. So one of these is not quite enough. Two of these is slightly too much, because that would be one every two and a half seconds, but that's as close as we can get. We obviously can't do half of a machine or purposely slow it down, or even if we could, we probably just wouldn't even want to. Uh, so we're just going to take this, and I'm actually, I am gonna move this a little closer because uh, we really only just need this output belt right here. And this does still leave plenty of space. We can just curve this around. Uh, so we're going to set this up first. A lot of times I did do a fundamental tutorial. I say fundamental, I have a fundamentals tutorial on uh, playlist on my channel uh, with a couple videos in there. There will be more. I think the next one I'll cover is combat. Uh, but I did one on working backwards when you create setups and recipes. And that's what I like to do. And that's what you're seeing me do here. Rather than starting with creating uh, you know, the very base materials for this, like creating stone bricks and then sending those to furnaces somewhere, uh, the, you know, the electric furnace production and then sending that to Purple Science and then working on the other things um, before I even build the Purple Science machines. I like to work backwards. So we've built the Purple Science, the end product first, the machines for it. Uh, we're now building this, the end product of this particular recipe first before we build the brick or anything that needs to go into it. And I personally just find that a lot easier for um, for routing uh, things and just keeping it straight in my mind, I suppose. Um, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to have red circuits be on this outside belt because it's a very uh, red circuit and uh, steel. Oh, hmm, I'm not quite sure we actually want to do that. Perhaps. Okay, I think we're at what we're actually going to do actually going to have this be our input belt and then we can just have another output belt here and one belt space in between that's generally what I like right there so we will do that and let's just get uh, we actually do need some fast since there is almost time I think to replace this also uh, we want to replace our power pole here so let's uh, we can middle click to clear that and then middle click again to set that and uh, it's almost time not quite but I think almost time to replace these with fast inserters um, in our hot bar here. Uh, so we do want fast inserters here. We need 10 brick, that's quite a bit. And then this one, definitely we need 15 materials from this belt, 10 steel and five red circuits. Uh, and then we need some long handed inserters to output these furnaces. And this is coming this direction because we are going to build our stone brick smelting right here. Again, much like we did with the walls. So this is uh, luckily very, very simple. Just build a line of furnaces like that. And just go ahead and do this here. These may not line up entirely correctly. Luckily they do though. Need a few more of these. We should run over to our hub and grab those. All right. So this line here is going to be coal and stone to make the stone brick. Luckily we've already made that once. Uh, I could actually have just uh, copy pasted with the copy paste tool uh, the setup from over here uh, although uh, that does help me with the kind of picture of the layout uh, but until we get robots it doesn't really help speed up the layout necessarily uh, at least for me because I already know very much by heart this setup that I want uh, with robots of course once we get robots the robots would actually place the things for us which would be definitely a lot faster but I would still have to place these manually so that's why I didn't do that. I didn't, I didn't really think it would be that much of a speed increase, if at all. Uh, so the stone is way back here. Uh, you may encounter this a lot. I at least do, uh, where you, you know, things you don't need very much of, or at least you don't need much of for a while, uh, kind of get left behind a bit on your bus. 
and you have to bring them all forward, you know, bring them up to speed here to where they need to be. Uh, now, ideally, you would probably be doing this just proactively as you, uh, you know, as you use them. Just like, you know, I, I would have brought this up along with everything else as I bring other things up, but uh, it's, it's okay to do this as long as you don't completely lose track or end up building something in the path of it. I have done that before, uh, so we're just going to kind of do this, clear that, and there we go. So over here, we need the stone and then the coal. Let's get the stone on this side uh, because it is uh, closer, so it won't, it won't be quite as awkward overlapping. We want that split off first. Since it's closer, so we'll just run this over and just line that up right there. Bring the coal over here. See how far we've actually built on our bus, how far we had to bring those. Uh, can pretty easily get away from you, actually, how, how far you build things out. And then we're going to take the coal and curve these out. Let's get an underground here. Uh, Okay, so this one, uh, we need to uh, do like that. That's the opening. Yeah, okay. A little hard to keep track of sometimes here. Again, we can just hold click and drag to get this over there. Uh, I feel as if I've maybe messed something up. Okay, no. Just went one too far there. Okay, let's do that. Bring this here, and luckily... We know exactly where that needs to go now because we can easily match it up, although I put it in the wrong spot again. There we go. Sometimes my spatial uh, awareness here gets a little off. So we've got that. And this is actually now ready to go. This will just kick on on its own. I'm going to leave this extra belt just because we probably will end up needing to expand that. And now all that's left to do for the electric furnaces is combine a belt of steel and red circuits. So now is the time where we do need to put red circuits onto our bus. Uh, just double check as to why I forgot a inserter here. Just need to double check if these are working. Uh, I'm just looking at the animation. You can pretty easily tell when the animation stops, uh, at least after a while, especially if you turn off the overlay with Alt or whatever you set it set it to. It's Alt by default, then, then you can really tell. Uh, when the animation stopped, or not. Uh, so this this will, uh, you know, it will definitely have a bit of a hit here, uh, trying to keep up, but... Uh, okay, so luckily this actually lines up fantastic with the rest of things here on our bus, and uh, I think I wanted, so that was plastic, I think I wanted to put it right after the plastic. So we know plastic's gonna be here, I'm actually going to underground preemptively, uh, so we can just simply do that and bring this right here. So I'm not sure 100% if we'll need two lanes of plastic, but again, planning for it, I think is the wise choice. Let's bring all these lines out here. Uh, of course, this needs to merge over here, but bringing it out there is good. Uh, again, the steel being closer to things, I want to split that first. So let's split this right here. And we'll just do something along those lines. This does not need to go way out there. And then we'll take the red circuits. Get rid of that. Luckily, there was nothing there. And then underground here. And it may seem like I'm going a little fast, but this, uh, you know, these, these steps I'm doing just at the moment here are things, at this point, we've done quite a few times. Uh, so, you know, I don't think I, I, I sh need to spend quite as much time on them, but please do tell me if I'm wrong, if you would like me to uh, more in-depth uh, explain things, uh, even things we've done already. I, I'm not opposed at all. Uh, don't get me wrong. I don't, you know, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but... Uh, so, so do let me know, you know, give me feedback on that. Okay, so we do have our electric furnaces done now at this point, uh, which is fantastic. They, they will be a little bit starved of red circuits here for a while, uh, but, you know, eventually catch up. We could make these level two assemblers here, which is probably not a bad idea in the near future. Uh, the next thing we can work on is modules. Modules are very simple, even simpler than the uh, electric furnaces there. So... 
uh, much like the furnaces, we need the same amount. So things that you need the same amount of, it's just very easy You just copy uh, the number uh, of them you need per second. So, so uh, we needed uh, seven every 21 seconds uh, of, of the electric furnaces because we have seven machines of these and it takes 21 seconds to craft, uh, which broke down to one every three seconds seven goes into 21 three times so we need the same for modules because it requires the same amount as furnaces and modules uh, and then if we look at this recipe uh, this is a 15 second craft uh, so one every three seconds uh, is going to be five machines because uh, if we had the way I look at this is if we had 15 of these to make one a second that's too much that, that's you know we only need a third of that so what is a third of 15 uh, well, that's five. Uh, so we need five machines here making these uh, modules, which doesn't seem like uh, it's like very much in terms of production or consumption, uh, but uh, th th I guarantee you this will take a lot of circuits. We are actually going to have, I imagine, uh, a very large circuit shortage here. Uh, we, we already have a red circuit shortage just with this. Uh, I think upgrading those to level two assemblers will help quite a lot, you know, 50% increase. It's it's as if we expand that by 50% basically without actually increasing the footprint, the physical footprint of it. Uh, so uh, that's a nice thing. That's also something that, you know, is to be taken into account with smelting, uh, you know, upgrading to say uh, steel smelters on, furn on uh, furnace setups is, is really nice because it's actually a 100% uh, increase with a crafting speed of one on these stone furnaces going to a crafting speed of two there on these steel furnaces uh, that is a 100% craft speed increase which means just by replacing your stone furnaces with a, uh, steel furnaces you're basically just doubling the amount of production you're making without increasing the uh, footprint at all so it's as if you doubled the size of your smelter without actually increasing the size of it at all uh, so then of course if you increase the size as well that's an even bigger uh, impact but uh, let's go ahead and bring these over and this is like i said this is a very very quick recipe to set up needing just two materials usually are fairly close together on the bus um, i say fairly but i mean they're fairly close here there they are fairly close uh, let's take this uh, very, very same type of strategy we've been employing here, uh, where we just take this here and just bring it on over and combine it. Again, I, I am really liking the idea of combining things over here. Uh, I, I haven't, I, I never really did this before, but I think it just makes the bus a little cleaner uh, on the actual lines. Now, it does create this huge mass of undergrounds through it, but if you do leave this two space here, um, and such that it really doesn't create any actual issue it's just a lot of visual real estate that it takes up uh, but whereas if you do combining on the bus which again I don't think there's anything wrong with that I pretty much have just always done that up until now uh, it it does make things a little bit more complicated just like in your lines if you try to combine it in there with with undergrounds and splitters uh, you know interfering with your actual lines rather than just a simple split off like that so now we can take this and these can very easily be normal inserters you know it's a 15 second craft uh, it doesn't need 10 materials total five of each but that's less than a material a second which you know these these normal level yellow inserters um, can easily handle so these fortunately the power poles will not be perfectly aligned here but Oof, we are actually having a bit of a little bit of a a snack over there the biters are having um, so what we're going to do is probably combine that line onto the furnace line because it's very easy the furnaces are already on one half of that belt and then the modules can just make up the other half and uh, the last thing we need to build here are these rails and these rails are going to eat a lot of well just all three of those materials honestly uh, the, you, you just need such a massive amount of them for this purple science that that they just really eat resources, uh, the, those resources very quickly. Uh, so this is not necessary to really continue at this point. Uh, however, a turret, I think, would be very appropriate. Uh, 
So taking some from there and then control right clicking to put it half of it in there. Uh, I'm still not entirely sure where those guys are coming from. There's water here, so it's not obviously uh, out here. And I don't see anything in our pollution. It's maybe... Uh, did they just... I don't know. I think that was a late, uh, continued late warning. The warning stays for a while. Um, I think maybe it's from these guys, and they're just routing around over here because that's like the closest high pollution thing. Although, like I said another episode ago, I'm, I'm puzzled that they don't go for a radar. Instead, usually radars are... Uh, well, like bug zappers, if you will. They uh, they really do seem to attract the biters to them. Uh, power is once we once we turn on all these machines for the purple science. Uh, I think we're gonna be right on the edge of our power there. So it's um, definitely something to keep in mind. Definitely going to need to expand power pretty decently here in the very near future. Uh, okay, so this rail setup is going to be pretty interesting. Uh, like I said last episode, it's going to end up being something actually uh, fairly similar to um, something fairly similar to us, the, the green circuit build we have. Gonna, we don't really need these in our inventory. Just dump those in there. And let's just, while we're at it, route this so it is all ready to go. Just bring this over here like so. And then take advantage of the nice side loading mechanic we have to side load onto here, knowing that they will always be on the correct side of the belt, both for the uh, modules and the furnaces. And this will continue down. And then we just need the rails. So as you can see, there are virtually no red circuits. We will need to fix that. Um, so the rails, if we take a look here, we need 30 rails every 21 seconds. That is a lot. Um, and we actually need seven times that amount, recall, because um, we have seven machines, which means, am I getting attacked? Ah, there they go after the radar. There we go. They heard me. <laughs> they heard me. They heard me say it. Uh, so luckily, this turns out to be pretty easy to calculate because uh, we need actually seven times this amount of rail and seven times 30 is 210, which uh, is a very easy multiplication or division because 21 goes in exactly 10 times. Uh, so, uh, basically, we need 10 a second, which is pretty crazy. Um, yeah, I believe that's correct. So, yeah, t 10, yeah, because we need 210 every 21 seconds. So, 10 a second in these rails. Uh, now, we do get two of them per craft, and they do take half a second. So, it's actually the same craft time as a circuit. Uh, we do get uh, two of them, though. It's uh, actually very much like the, it's identical to the copper cable recipe in terms of its craft time and output. Um, so in one second, we actually get four of, of these, right? Right, Because two every half second, and that equals uh, four a second, and we need 10 a second. So two isn't quite enough, because that gives us eight a second. Uh, so we're going to have to go to three, uh, because you know we, we got a little overboard, you know, since going under isn't really what we want here. Uh, and what we're going to end up having to do is, uh, like I said, so what we're going to do, we need three. We know we need three. So let's go ahead and place these and do this. Now, uh, due to the just the sheer speed and quantity that we're going to need these at, uh, direct insertion whenever possible is what we're going to be aiming for here, much like the green circuits. And these require, of course, stone and steel, which we'll show you how you're going to get those in. Uh, and then iron sticks, which of course we don't have on the bus, but they're very easy to make, you know, just needing iron. So we do need an iron line over here. And we get two sticks uh, for iron plate. Uh, so we're going to do a setup. Oh, hello. Okay. Whew. I'm glad I was standing here. That caught me quite by surprise. Oh my goodness. Uh, I think definitely this base, potentially this base. Uh, I think we can still work on this though. We're, we're basically in the path where they'll come through anyway. Um, so we want to direct insert these these rods here, uh, and this needs essentially uh, two a second, and we have three, so we actually need six per second, um, and these give us uh, four per second because again it's a half craft time, half second, and two. Uh, so four is not quite enough. We do need two of these. Again, it's going to be a bit more than we need, but you always want to round up. Uh, it's just it, it's going to help with there not being uh, you know a a lack of things. So rounding up is always good. And uh, what we're going to do then is we want direct insertion. So we're going to end up with something that looks 
nearly identical, uh, almost reversed, of the circuits, though. Uh, so with cable being 3 and the circuits being 2, we actually have the re bit of a reverse here where it's uh, sticks being 2 and rails being 3, but uh, I say it's a very similar, almost identical setup because uh, in terms of the actual just like general placement of machines and, and the way we're inserting things is uh, essentially identical. Uh, so we're going to have this here. Uh, and now the steel, that's not really going to be much of a problem to keep up with, or the stone. Uh, but the output, outputting four of these a second, is going to be, whew, it's going to be very difficult. Uh, so there's, there's a few things we can do. Um, a few things we can do here. And I think I have a bit of an idea in mind how I want to do this. Uh, so we want an inserter here and here, I think, for uh, input. And we are going to put stone and steel on a belt, uh, just because it's only one of each. And we, and we do uh, need quite a lot. Now, of course, you may be questioning why we're putting those on a belt and not these. Uh, it's just because these are something we don't already have on a belt. Uh, so it's just kind of an extra step to make them and then belt them when we can easily just insert them here. Luckily, it works out very nicely. If it didn't work out so nicely, we, perhaps we would put them on a belt. Um, obviously, there's not really a great way to in directly insert like machine to machine uh, with uh, the stone or, or, or steel and I guess it would be furnace to machine in this case, but uh, there's not really a good way to do that. So uh, luckily, these two lines are actually right next to each other. This may be an exception where I combine the two things on the bus, just because uh, we have a unique situation where they actually happen to be directly next to each other. Uh, so things might be a bit easier, because uh, if we do something like this... Um, now, well, of course, it, this makes it a little more difficult. Uh, but I think this is still probably a bit easier than running two lines just that are already next to each other all the way down. Uh, this is a little bit wonky. We get that one extra belt there, but that's not a huge problem. Uh, whenever we do bring... I'll see, luckily there's actually nothing we bring over here. So this is, And then it lines up perfectly just like that. And there we go. However, we need a ton of output. And ideally, we actually need a full belt of output. You'll notice with pretty much everything we're doing here, we actually have half of a belt of output, which is sufficient for nearly everything we do. Um, however, with the vast amount of these we're going to need, uh, just both with the output and then just the amount we need to be sending to Purple Science, we actually want an entire belt, if at all possible, of rail. Uh, and this is a little bit difficult to do, but we can take advantage of some underground belts here. So we, we have basically two open spaces on every assembler, right? We have two here, two here, and two here. And we can take advantage of this with underground belts. So I can do something like that. Uh, inserters can still grab from undergrounds, I think. I'm not actually sure if we've used this trick before, uh, done anything with inserters grabbing from underground belts. So uh, to cover this, inserters can grab from underground belts just as they can from above ground belts, both on the exit and the entry flap. Uh, so this is a really nice thing you can take advantage of. Um, they can also output on underground belts as well, uh, j just like they can input. So uh, the, the the same rule will apply where they will output on just the far side. Uh, there, there really is no difference in terms of input and output um, when using the underground and the above ground, except obviously you can't grab from when it's underground. Uh, but because of that fact, this allows us to take advantage and um, output on two separate sides of a belt and, and actually output a fair bit here. So uh, we could just do two inserters, two fast inserters. I would get things out quicker. Uh, but this is still ends up on the same side of the belt, uh, really almost any way I can think of here. Uh, I suppose maybe that wouldn't. I don't know. Uh, I think it actually still would. The curve is a little tricky. Um, but what we can do then is if we actually take, make our output right here, which is a bit cleaner anyway, uh, we can use our side loading technique just like this. And this will insert onto this belt, which will then side load onto this close side of the belt. And then to get on the far side of the belt, we can use long handed inserters. Uh, now, one thing we could do, I'm realizing now, is we actually could get really tricky and we could take a fast inserter and actually underground it 
and then merge onto this side and do that for each of these if we want to get really, really tricky. Uh, I don't think that's necessary. If it is, that is an option, and uh, I think it would actually work quite well. Uh, but I do think one fast inserter and one longhand inserter will be sufficient to keep up with this. Um, so that extra step just I don't think is necessary. It does make powering it slightly easier as well because you can just put the power poles right here. Uh, again, this won't really interfere with the inserter swing, luckily. Uh, put a power pole in the middle and in the middle. Um, and then, of course, the long-handed will insert on the other side of the belt to how do inserters work. And uh, we lastly just need to run iron, which is quite a ways down here, but luckily it's pretty close to uh, just this way to things. So let's go ahead and run this over like that. Nearly out of belt here. Run that over. And this should uh, start working as soon as the iron gets here. And we'll, we'll have to see. We'll have to see if this can actually keep up correctly or, 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 you know, as much as it needs to effectively. Let's just run this underneath here. I want to try to get some belt length here just so we can actually see a decent length of operation for these to see if it will keep up. It's being attacked. That's fine. Uh, so this is going to split. And we can now check this. And how we're going to do this, uh, you do need to really to see the full... Um, you know, operation process and how it's working. You need to keep this open. You, I mean, you can look at the animation. I'll just generally tell you if it's working. Um, so things will highlight in red if they're able to keep up or not. And it looks like this is actually not. Um, this one is actually short on steel, interestingly. Uh, I think another stack size bonus would potentially help us that we can research. Yeah, so it'll highlight in red what is bottlenecking this, whether it be an input or an output. Uh, we don't have an output problem. And now part of that may be because we're not making these at completely 100% speed since we have an input problem. Uh, but you can kind of see how this is working and how this is working here. And it's really actually quite quite awesome to see. Having uh, rails on a belt is a pretty unique experience. Um, so if we go into our research tree here, we can actually grab our first, in fact, stack size bonus. And uh, what this does is this allows Stack inserters, this is not just stack inserters, so this allows all inserters um, to move more items at once. Some of the upgrades add a small amount of stacking, even to non-stack inserters. So it does say what I said, just says it kind of in the reverse order. Um, so what this is going to do is once we research that, that'll allow all of our inserters to move one more item in their hand at once. So instead of just moving uh, one, basically, it'll allow, us, it'll allow them to move two. And then the next one will allow them to move three. And I think normal inserter, all inserters except stack cap out at three, I believe. I haven't actually looked in a long time. And then you can get more upgrades for stack inserters to get stack inserters up past 10 even. I think stack inserters, I want to say they cap at 11. Again, the numbers, I may be off by one or two on that, but uh, it's, it's like 10 plus. I, I know for a fact 11 plus, I'd say, for stack inserters that they cap out. So that's why stack inserters are so good. We will be using them later on. Uh, they are quite expensive, though. I mean, 15 electronic circuits each in 15 gears plus a red circuit and the previous inserter. Um, so, uh, obviously, we can't really wait for this to finish right now, but uh, we, we should check this next episode um, to see if that stack size bonus, once we complete it, does help. It looks like we are having a bit of an attack here. Luckily, I have my trusty piercing ammo. If we did not have piercing ammo, I think that would have uh, ended a little bit more dangerously uh we should definitely put a turret here and then next episode we should go do some clearing of the biters because these attacks are becoming a little bit too consistent for my liking uh, so we need to clear out this base clear out this base and uh, honestly by the time we're out there next episode it would be safe to clear out this base as well it's just barely being touched and just one more uh expansion cloud or square this way and it will be fully covered so definitely need to take those out otherwise though this maybe is an expansion. I can't quite tell yet. Uh, this seems like it might be, though, actually. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this might be. Um, but otherwise, not a huge threat. Nothing like on my stream. Oh, my goodness. We're having so many biter problems on my stream playthrough. Uh, but luckily, we're staying a little safer here. It's allowing us to make some very good progress. And uh, I think this is a fantastic place to stop, guys. We actually now have purple science created, which is... Uh, what I wanted to get done for this episode. I'm really glad we achieved it. I was a little unsure, to be honest with you. 
excuse me, if we were actually going to be able to uh, reach the goal I had set. Um, but I'm very pleased to say that we have. So uh, purple science is done. We will get this stack size bonus either by or during next episode and check on the rail production and see what's going on there. Surely we will run out of actual materials for this, uh, I imagine, here soon. Especially once we start consuming the purple science and it fills up this belt. A lot of belt fill up there. Uh, but we also need to take out biters. We need to upgrade these to level 2 assemblers um, so we can start creating more uh, red circuits. And I believe that will do it. So hopefully that made sense. Uh, hopefully I didn't go too fast and I covered enough uh, details. I, I can't think of much else I uh, needed to cover here. This is a fairly simple setup. It just encompasses this area right here. Uh, actually about the same size as, as uh, Blue Science. So it was a lot easier because we already had a lot of stuff made, whereas Blue Science, we had to, you know, set up oil first to even get this stuff. Um, so it was a bit more of a lengthy process, but uh, that these rails are just fascinating to me. I think that's going to do it. Also need to upgrade power next episode. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you found this helpful uh, and enjoyable. And if you did, a like is much appreciated, as always, so other people can find this and hopefully it can help them too. And if you are new to the game, uh, I want to give you a big welcome and just, uh, and just say I'm glad you found the game and I hope you're having a great time and I hope you're uh, enjoying you know, the playing and content and, uh, and such. And if you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe if you aren't already to keep up with all the new content that's coming out. Uh, lots of episodes of this, standalone tutorials, mod spotlights, discussions, and news. And uh, I look forward to having you around. As always, guys, leave your thoughts and questions down below. I will do my best to look at them and uh, respond. And until next time, I look forward to seeing you all, and do take care.